we hear the, the taking apart of that rationale, uh, we've asked Roland Wilson and Craig Benjamin, I don't know where you are, Craig, I'm assuming you're here, to each take a minute or two just to frame this discussion because um, the framing of it for us is within the context of treaty rights. So Roland, if you'd like to come up and Craig, that'd be great. I was about to say good morning. <laughs> it's good afternoon. Um, thank you all for coming. Thank you all that are helping out with this. Um, it was a couple years ago I was standing here doing this. Um, and at that time, I had George Desiree, uh, an elder in my community, uh, come with me and we, we did a talk. I have to, I'm a little disconnected here. We've had a tragedy back in the community. Our whole community is kind of in turmoil right now. <clears throat> a young man just got killed in a car accident. So you know, it happened Wednesday. Uh, we had some deliberations, and, and the, the council thought it was best that I continue on to here, and then I'll head home after this. this is, I can't stay for the whole event that's happening down here. I apologize for that, but I got to get back home soon. Um, the, the treaty context is. Uh, I'm not sure if you all understand Treaty Number Eight. It's the it's, uh, it's the eight of the historic treaties that were signed in Canada. Um, it, it's one of the largest, most comprehensive treaties ever signed in Canada. It was signed in 1899 on the shores of Lesser Slave Lake. The West Mobile First Nations uh, used to be we used to be called the Hudson's Hope Band, uh, where the original one of the original Denizaw bands. Us and Halfway River adhered to a treaty in 1914 um, in, in the territory. Uh, so we've our, we just celebrated our 100th year treaty uh, celebration a couple years ago uh, on that. Uh, the treaty, the context of the treaty is one thing, but there are these things called oral promises that were made to get the First Nations to sign treaty with the, with the government, with Canada. The treaty is between Canada, BC, and the agencies that act on behalf of Canada, which includes BC uh, on it, and every Crown agency that works for them, which is BC Hydro uh, on that. Uh, they have a different interpretation of that on that, and any time you talk with BC, they say they have no obligation to treaty, yet they receive all the benefit of treaty. So it's it's one of those challenging things that we're always having to force them to honor their agreement with the treaty. And it's, we, it's our understanding that the treaty belongs to everybody. It's not just a treaty with us, it's a treaty with you. you know, uh, and, and the words that were used, some of the words that were used uh, at, in the oral promises were um, the First Nations are, are in no way forced into forced interference theory. They should be allowed to continue a way of life after signing the treaty as if they had never entered in the treaty and there should be no forced interference with their mode of life. When we look at what's happening in northeastern BC with all the resource development that's happening, you have to put it in the context. The First Nations have been on the ground there for time immemorial. 10,000 years ago, they're finding Artifacts dating back 10,000 years ago. That was our ancestors that placed those artifacts there. They, were, they weren't artifacts; they're tools. <laughs> um, you know, so there, we've been boots on the ground in the Peace River Valley when the mammoth walked there. We hunted the mammoth. You know, we're still there to this day, using the Peace River Valley. You know, and and sharing it with people like Ken Boone and everybody else that's from the peace uh, country uh, in, in this fight. You know, we've, that was part of the treaty that we were supposed to share and, and be a part. Now, we're not opposed to the development. We haven't ever stated that we're opposed to development. What we're opposed to is the unnecessary destruction of that valley. We're already living with W.A.C. Bennett and the Wilson Reservoir. We're already living with Dinosaur, uh, Peace Canyon Dam and the Dinosaur Reservoir, 
between those two facilities and bodies of water, they take up 80% of the Peace River. Not just the Peace River, they take up uh, close to 300 tributaries that flow into the, <coughs> excuse me, I'm fighting the cold too, uh, that flow into the Peace River. All the fish that are in those bodies of water are contaminated with methylmercury. Every year, the, the hunting and fishing regulations come out and there's a little clause in there in the, the refishing part of that, warning the general public not to consume too much fish because they're laden with mercury out of the, the Wilson uh, water system. There are 219 caribou left in the South Peace. When they flooded the Wilson Reservoir in 1969, it created a divide between the caribou migration and it, and it separated the northern and southern uh, groups. And the southern group is, is dwindling before our eyes. Um, there's no more mountain sheep. There's no more mountain goat in, in the valley. Now what we've said is no to the damage, no to the flooding. We haven't said no to the energy. And we've always been willing to sit down and have a conversation about wind, geothermal, solar, even gas if necessary, in order to save the valley. But we've never been able to have that talk. And now we find ourselves I'm back down here again. You know, the Liberal government, we went around with them. We were hopeful the NDP government, you know, the promises they made, we took to heart. You know, and the, and the reason why we brought the stakes back today was they lied about it. You know, they said what they needed to say to get in. We put our effort behind them, ensured they got in, and when it came time for them to honor their word, they, they failed on it. So we brought their stakes. Uh, the uh, Minister Horgan, uh, Minister Horgan, Prime, Premier Horgan, Minister Lana Popham, and Minister George Heyman both purchased uh, a stake in the piece for $100. We brought them back today and gave them back to them and gave them their money back for that. So um, I want to thank everybody. I know I was well over two minutes. My name is Craig Benjamin. Uh, I'm here to speak on behalf of the membership of Amnesty International uh, across Canada and around the world who've uh, put our energy and efforts to stand behind the, the people of the Peace River Valley in this fight against Site C. I want to thank the organizers for the chance to be here and to acknowledge the Songhees, the Esquimo, and the Wasanish people uh, to be on their traditional territories. You're about to hear an expert panel that will talk about why the rationale given by the NDP for continued uh, construction of this dam doesn't hold up. But what I want to say at the outset is that even if there were an economic justification for continued dis construction of this dam, it would still be wrong. It would be wrong, and we shouldn't stand for it, for precisely the reasons shared by Chief Rowland and precisely for the reasons that the, the people of the Peace Valley have stood up against this dam. It is a violation of the treaty relationship. It is a violation of the promise in our Constitution to honour and uphold the rights of Indigenous peoples. It's a violation of the commitment made before the international community when Canada agreed to support instruments like the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. It is quite simply wrong. And when we say that it's wrong, we're not alone. This summer, the United Nations Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination said in no uncertain terms, the construction of the Site C Dam must stop. This is the United Nations' top anti-racism body. This is the body with greater experience than any other international body in interpreting and applying the rights of Indigenous peoples in international law. And they said the Site C Dam is a clear violation of the rights of Indigenous peoples, and the solution is to stop it. I, 
I don't have a cold, but I'm, I'm having trouble speaking because I'm choked up, because I'm really angry about this. I'm really angry not just because it's such a bad decision, but because of the way in which the decision was announced. And when you go back and listen to, to what, what the, the Premier, Premier said, said, he doesn't acknowledge the rights of the people of Treaty 8. Instead, he says that he is just the latest in a long line of Premiers to disappoint First Nations. Right? And that's an appeal to apathy and indifference. It's an appeal to an acceptance that when it comes to legal rights, human rights, that there are rights of certain people that we can ignore and push aside because that's the way it's always been, that's the way it always will be. And that is unacceptable. Chief Rowland, <laughs> Chief Rowland said that it is all of our treaties. Right? Is we are all treaty people. We all have an obligation to uphold Treaty 8. We have heard that Prophet River, West Moberly, are taking on the enormous burden of standing up for their rights in court. And what I would ask all of us to do today and tomorrow is to think about what we will do to shoulder our responsibility under that treaty. What will we do to stand with them to protect the Peace Valley. Thank you. Yo, hey, hey, yo, yo, hey, hey.